Hola, feliz viernes. Yo soy Rory. Hoy es viernes y estoy contento de estar aquí contigo. Hoy nuestro tema es dolor, dolor, pain. Pain's our topic today and of all topics this is gosh, a very essential one, right? For uh, figuring out how your patients are doing. So, hoy conversando sobre el dolor en español. Vamos a empezar with un verbo útil, so one useful verb. We'll actually add another one here in a minute, but un verbo útil para empezar es el verbo tener, the verb to have. And so this verb conjugates, it's irregular, so the yo form doesn't follow the regular rules of conjugation. Yo tengo, tú tienes, él, ella, usted tiene, nosotros tenemos, Vosotros tenéis, I've got it scratched out because as you know in the Americas here we don't use the vosotros form very much. Doesn't mean it's not valid, but it's just that it's not as useful and we try to keep things always as simple as possible. Anyway, that's the vosotros form. Ellos, ellas, ustedes tienen. Perfecto. So, simple verbo, tiene dolor, right? Tiene dolor. Do you have pain? Perfecto. Cuatro palabras confusas. When it comes to dolor, oftentimes in my classes, and you probably hear it also amongst other uh, folks that are learning Spanish, but you hear dolor, you hear duele, you might hear adolorido, you might hear doloroso, and you're just not sure what they all mean, how to use them uh, precisely and perfectly within the right grammar context. They all have to do with pain. They all relate to pain, but they're slightly different on a grammar level, which means you have to use them slightly differently. So let's take a look. Cuatro palabras confusas. First, dolor is pain. It's a noun. It's the noun pain, right? The thing, pain. It's not hurt, it's pain. <clears throat> Un ejemplo. El paciente tiene dolor de cabeza. The patient has dolor de cabeza, a headache. Duele is the verb hurt. Okay, so it's from the verb doler. And so duele isn't pain, duele is hurt. And so, por ejemplo, me duele el pecho. My chest hurts. Okay, me duele el pecho. This is our next verb, actually, we're going to take a look at. Right after this slide, we're going to see what's different about the verb doler as it relates to how you use it and what subjects are involved. Adolorido is hurt, sore, or aching. It's an adjective. So something is hurt, something is sore, or something is aching. We're done? Also, dolorido is uh, the same as adolorido. Dolorido, adolorido, same thing. Tengo las rodillas adoloridas. So I have knees, I have sore knees, basically is what this saying. I have uh, aching knees, okay? Perfecto. Y finalmente, doloroso is painful, also an adjective. So something is painful, ¿verdad? Could be an action, could be a body part. Una fractura es dolorosa, or could be a condition. Una fractura, a fracture is painful, ¿verdad? Okay. All right, so we've got cuatro palabras, dolor, duele, adolorido, and doloroso, four common words to describe pain, but they're not interchangeable. You can't use them willy-nilly. You have to know what and use them properly within their uh, grammar context. Okay, perfecto. Otro verbo útil. Otro verbo útil, getting back to duele, it's a little bit different. When we, when teacher people put this verb down, they put le at the end because it reminds everyone that it's going to work a little bit differently than the average verb. And that lay refers to who it's actually hurting, okay? And so dolor, uh, doler is set up slightly different. We don't have our regular subjects anymore. It turns out that the person is now in grammar speak is now the indirect object. So something hurts me is what this is saying. A mí me duele el ojo, ¿sí? We also have this N here because it could be plural. A mí me duelen los ojos, both eyes, right? Okay, continuamos. A ti te duelen. <clears throat> a él le duele. A ella le duele. A usted le duele. Or the plural would be N, ¿verdad? So if it's me duele el brazo, 
Me duelen los brazos. And you're asking your patient, um, ¿Le duele el brazo? ¿Le duelen los brazos? ¿Le duelen las rodillas? Plural. It has an N on it. Bien. A nosotros nos duele. A vosotros os duele. Again, only in Spain is this form used, not in the Americas at large, and so no es muy necesario. A ellos, a ellas, a ustedes les duele o les duelen. Okay, let's take a look at some examples. Por ejemplo, ¿Dónde le duele? Where does it hurt? ¿Dónde le duele? A usted. If we had to figure out who this le was referring to, then we would clarify with a usted. ¿Dónde le duele a usted? <clears throat> Me duele la espalda. My back hurts. Me duele la espalda. ¿Le duelen las costillas cuando respira? Do your ribs hurt when you breathe? No, no me duelen las costillas cuando respiro. No, my ribs don't hurt when I breathe. Okay, so here we see we're talking about las costillas, and so duelen is plural, ¿verdad? And here we're talking about la espalda, singular, so duele is singular. There's no N on it. Okay. Perfecto. Now, we've got some basics about the verb to hurt and some basic vocabulary around pain. Let's start getting into the kinds of everyday questions you want to ask your patient. Starting off with la ubicación, the location. Donde is what we want to know. We want to know where it hurts. And so, we could ask that in a couple of different ways. Que le duele? What hurts? Now remember that le is referring to usted in a direct one-on-one -on -one conversation. If you're talking to children, what would it be? Well, we'd go back to the conjugations of the verb doler and let's take a look. If we would look at the verb doler and we would go to the two form. Te duele. See? So, que te duele if we're talking to children. But remember, that's really only for um, kids 13 and younger. Anyone in their teens and up should be usted. Le duele. All right, let's plow back through these same examples and move back. So, que le duele? <clears throat> Donde le duele? Where does it hurt? And remember, you could replace this le with te at any time if you're talking to children. ¿Le duele la cabeza? ¿Le duele el abdomen? The abdomen. <clears throat> or plural. ¿Le duelen los brazos? ¿Le duelen las costillas? Here we have open-ended question, which is great. Um, and, but, you know, you need to be able to track with your patient to understand what they're saying back to you. Um, here, if you need to narrow something down or control the conversation a little bit with a yes-no question, you can use this yes-no format. Okay, fantastico. Continuamos. Let's say that um, we're really more in a point-and-show stage with our patients or maybe with our Spanish. Here's how you can do that. Uh, indíqueme, show me, dónde le duele. Show me where it hurts, básicamente. Or, señáleme dónde le duele. They both mean show me where it hurts. Okay? And now some adjectives, some, excuse me, some vocabulary, some prepositions around locations of things. So we have aquí and acá. They both mean here. There's no difference between the two. Um, aquí, here, acá, here. There's no distance separation either. Okay? Arriba or abajo, above or below, ¿verdad? Delante de or detrás de, in front of or behind, ¿sí? Adentro, inside, or afuera, outside. Encima de, on top of. Ok, bien. So, <clears throat> indíqueme dónde le duele. Mm, me duele aquí. It hurts here. Or, me duele acá. Ok. Uh, arriba or abajo. Um, me duele el abdomen. Ah, ¿dónde en el abdomen? Abajo or arriba. Okay, to talk about the location specifically. Cuando, moving on to when now. Uh, so we figured out how to ask and talk about where it hurts. Now we're moving to when. Cuando. 
¿Cuándo le duele? Uh, le duele, and we can now begin to add some uh, possible with a yes, no question, you could add some timing, which we'll get to here, some timing vocabulary. But very open-ended here, ¿cuándo le duele? When does it hurt? Okay, possible response, me duele, of course, because it's hurting me, me duele, ¿cuándo? Any action, right? Me duele, ¿cuándo como? It hurts when I eat. Or me duele, ¿cuándo respiro? When I breathe. Me duele cuando any action, ¿verdad? Me duele, here's a timing, por la mañana, por la tarde, por la noche. Por is the word we're going to use for just general time of day. So you could use en also, en la mañana, en la tarde, en la noche. So por la mañana, in the morning, por la tarde, in the afternoon, por la noche, in the evening. Me duele antes de or después de, and now these are typically going to be followed by another verb, before, no sé, but after I go to bed or after I eat or lo, después de ejercicio, después de comer, después de, you name it, right? Any verbo in there. Antes de, después de. Antes de es before, después de is after. Mientras or durante. This is while or during. ¿Verdad? Okay, so me duele mientras um, you fill in the action blank, right? De repente, suddenly. Suddenly. Bien. Ahora, so we've covered cuando, when it hurts. Now let's talk about frequency. Con qué frecuencia. Basically, we're asking how often with con qué frecuencia. Con qué frecuencia le duele? How often does it hurt? Or another way to ask it, cada cuánto le duele? Now, cada cuánto is basically saying how often, uh, but while this is literally saying with what frequency does it hurt, this is literally saying every how much, <laughs> basically, see? Uh, cada cuánto le duele? You'll hear both. You can use either and they're 100% intelligible. Si, uh, me duele, me duele siempre, always, es constante, it's constant. Me duele a menudo, often, me duele a menudo. Me duele con frecuencia, again, frequently, often. Me duele de vez en cuando, from time to time, so a little bit, every once in a while, basically. Casi nunca, almost never, see? Okay, so frecuencia, pretty straightforward, just a handful of vocabulario there to give you some timing words and timing vocab. Bien, <clears throat> oops, we went backwards, lo siento, we need to go forward. Vamos a ver, okay, now, we've talked about timing, now we're going to talk about uh, por cuánto tiempo. Por cuánto tiempo? And when we, when we ask the question for how long, you could maybe go in two directions. You could go in a, like an onset, like how when did this start and how long have you had this pain? Or you could go the uh, duration route and talk about how long does it last. And so we're going to see both of those here. So getting to inicio and when it started, Por cuánto tiempo, for how long, ha tenido este dolor? Now this ha tenido, that's a form of tener, but it's a compound form. It's called the present perfect, have you had. So por cuánto tiempo have you had este dolor? Ha tenido este dolor. Desde cuándo, since when, does it hurt? Desde cuándo le duele? Hace cuánto que tiene ese dolor? Now, hace cuánto is a very common expression in Spanish. It's not very English. There isn't a great English equivalent you can peg it to, um, but it's basically for how long. Hace cuánto que tiene, when we use the present tense, it's when in the past did it start up until now when you currently still have it, right? Hace cuánto que tiene. Okay, bien. Continuamos. <clears throat> Now we move on to duración, duración, duration. So, ¿cuánto tiempo dura cuando tiene dolor? How long does it last when you have pain? Okay, bien. Now, <clears throat> you're also going to want to talk intensidad and get the, the pain scale going. That's what we've got coming up now. Okay, so, ¿cómo está el dolor? 
en una escala de 0 a 10. Basically, we're asking how bad's the pain on a scale of 0 to 10, ¿verdad? ¿Cómo está el dolor en una escala de 0 a 10? And another question, ¿cuánto le duele? How much does it hurt? Again, en una escala de 0 a 10. Depending on the question, you could have possible uh, different answer variations. Let's take a look. First of all, setting up the scale, ¿cómo está el dolor en una escala de 0 a 10? 0 es sin dolor. No le duele nada. 10 es el peor dolor. Ay, es mucho dolor. El peor dolor. The worst pain ever. Okay? Um, so, está leve. El dolor está, de, está leve. Some descriptors up here. Está leve. Está moderado. It's moderate. Está severo. Severe. Está muy severo. ¿Sí? And, of course, we have our numeros. ¿Verdad? If, uh, if you need to have a specific numero. Bien. ¿Cuánto le duele? How much does it hurt? Me duele un poquito. Now we're using that duele verb again. Me duele un poquito. Me duele un poco. Me duele mucho. Me duele muchísimo. Let's clarify the numbers just in case uh, you're not 100% familiar with numbers 1 to 10 or 0 to 10. First of all, cero. Cero is our number. Cero. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete, ocho, nueve, and diez. So, ¿cuánto le duele en una escala de 0 a 10? 0 es sin dolor, no le duele. 10 es el peor dolor, le duele muchísimo. ¿Ok? Bien. Once we've got intensidad, an understanding of intensidad, we can move on to tipo or clase, what kind or type of uh, dolor es, ¿sí? So, ¿qué tipo de dolor es? What kind of pain is it? El dolor va y viene, comes and goes, va y viene, or es intermitente, intermitente, básicamente no es constante. However, constante es una palabra, el dolor es constante, siempre, right? Siempre, always. Es ardiente, like a burning pain, ¿sí? Es ardiente. Es compresión, compresión, with pressure. Es punzante, thum, 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 thum. it's a throbbing pain, ¿ya? Yeah? Es punzante. Es irradiadora, es irradiado. Corre por, ¿sí? El dolor corre. The pain shoots or runs. Y... Um, We use el verbo corre, to run, to talk about, si, sí, me duele la cintura, y el dolor corre por la pierna. It runs or shoots through the leg. If we say corre a, if we say corre a, then we're talking about running or shooting too. So we can say por, through, but a, too. Me duele el pecho, el dolor corre por el brazo, si, ¿sí? or, um, no sé, me duele el hombro, el dolor no corre, no corre, es constante, ¿ok? All right, bien. Es agudo, sharp pain, es agudo, es sordo, it's a dull pain. Ok, continuamos. Now we know the intensity and we know the type of pain, but we want a little more background information. We want to ask, you know, well, what were you doing and how did this get started? Um, and so, la pregunta, ¿qué estaba haciendo? What were you doing? ¿Qué estaba haciendo? Or, ¿qué hacía? This is just another form of the verb. It's the imperfect past tense, which talks about ongoing things in the past. So, it's perfect here. ¿Qué hacía? Or, ¿estaba haciendo? Cuando el dolor empezó, when the pain started. So, what were you doing when the pain started? ¿Qué pasaba? What was happening? Cuando el dolor empezó. You'll know the situation and what's a better question to ask, right? ¿Dónde estaba cuando el dolor empezó? Where were you when the pain started? Okay, bien. So we've got a better sense of how it started or what was going on when the pain started now. Uh, now, these are very open-ended questions, right? And they're using past tense. And so, you know, this past tense is a little bit tricky to follow with. Uh, if you haven't studied it yet, and so this will be a little more familiar with intermediate level speakers and up. 
¿Qué le hace sentir mejor o peor? What makes you feel better or worse? Okay. <clears throat> ¿Qué lo hace mejor o peor? Now, ¿qué le hace sentir mejor o peor? That's referring to you as the patient. What makes you feel better? Now, we're using lo here. ¿Qué lo hace sentir mejor o peor? Lo, we're implicitly referring to el dolor, the pain itself. Okay, so ¿qué lo hace mejor o peor? Está mejor cuando, it's better when, fill in the blank. Está peor cuando, it's worse when, fill in the blank. You could turn these into questions really easy by just using your intonation. Está mejor cuando descansa? Is it better when you rest? Or está peor cuando se esfuerza? Is it worse when you uh, exert yourself? <clears throat> ¿Toma medicina para el dolor? Are you taking medicine? Oh, ¿qué toma? Well, what are you taking? ¿La medicina ayuda? That's the next obvious question, right? Does the medicine help? Okay, perfecto. That's all I have planned for you today. Thanks for joining me. Uh, muchas gracias. Para más oportunidades con el español, visítenos en Common Ground International. For more Spanish opportunities, head over to the website uh, and I'll see you there. Hasta luego. Feliz Viernes. Hey, thank you for joining me today on this video Viernes lesson. I wanted to invite you to join our community if you're not a member of the Facebook group already that I deliver these live lessons in on most every Friday. And also point you to the website where you can find a bunch more information about medical Spanish, whether that be courses or free materials for you or finding a private tutor to work with you online or face to face. And also let you know about some amazing Spanish immersion programs, either you as a medical person or your significant other as working in some other industry or your family. If you want to improve your Spanish and you have time and budget to go do some travel, our programs are pretty amazing. I think it'd be fun to work with you. And finally, if you have some document work at your clinic or at your hospital or within your setting that needs to be professionally translated, shoot me a message. Upload your document to us and we can get you a quick quote and help you out with your uh, Spanish language documents as well. Have a great day.